Our Father, we thank you for our Bible study. We bless your name for your faithful people, always coming, always learning, and making use of what we learn. We're asking, Lord, that tonight, once again, you speak to every heart in Jesus' name. And through us here, you speak to all the locations where the Bible study is being held tonight in Jesus' name. Strengthen us, Lord. Help us to move forward. And to be obedient to the word you are teaching us every time in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see now we are studying tonight from John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 17. John 15 verse 17 through to the end. These six I commanded you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Well, because I have chosen ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Verse 20, remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sin, they will also keep yours. But all these will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak, no excuse for their sin. Verse 23, he that hateth me, hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this come to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. They hated me without any reason for doing so. But when the comforter is come, the comforter has come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which cometh, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Verse 27, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. That's the passage we are looking at tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ had been talking to his own disciples and through them he's been speaking to us as well. And if you look at the whole chapter, the chapter is talking about fruitfulness. That God demands fruitfulness. That God desires fruitfulness of his children. And from what we have learned and all the verses we have seen, we know that this fruitfulness is based on quite a lot of uh, kind of uh, characteristics in our lives. We must have the quality of faithfulness. If you are not faithful, you cannot bear fruit. And yet God wants you to bear fruit bear more fruit and bear much fruit. Not only that, the attribute of friendliness. If you're going to win souls, if you're going to touch the lives of people, if you're going to bring them to conviction, and you're going to bring them to persuasion, if they're going to be converted, there has to be friendliness between you and them. And so we understand fruitfulness, number one, faithfulness, number two, friendliness, number three. But now, we know we are calling them out of their sin so that they can come to the Savior. We're calling them from their defilement so that they can come to the cleansing of the Lord. Therefore, ourselves, we ourselves, number one, we must be free from fil filthiness. And number two, must be free from foolishness. If we are as foolish as the people of the world, 
as defiled as the people of the world and we are as sinful as people of the world how can we win them how can we convince them how can we persuade them that this is the way what he in it but when we ourselves have experienced freedom from the lord and we are cleansed from filthiness we are cleansed from foolishness then we can go forth and bear fruit and thank god i will bear fruit and he wants us to bear not just fruit, he wants more fruit, and he wants much fruit. That demands that we are steadfast, that demands that we are zealous, that demands that we are single minded. Now, in the verses I've read to you, the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, preparing the minds of his own disciples. He was getting them ready because they were going to go out and face the world. They were going to go out and preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom unto the people of the world. But he served them notice. He watched them. He told them the world will show hatred. They will show enmity. And they will show antagonism. They will show some hostility. They will want to resist them. These are people of the world because they are blind and they do not understand what compassion these disciples will show them. They will resist them. And so he told them, understand, they'll persecute you. Understand, they'll reject you. Understand, they will oppose you. And then he made himself the example. He said, I've come to them. I revealed the truth to them. I brought grace to them. I brought the goodness of heaven to them. And see what they have done. They have hated me and they have hated my father. But there's something uh, wonderful about the Lord Jesus Christ through it all. Even though the world hated him, he remained loving. And that's the reason we're looking at this, that as we face persecution outside, we face opposition outside, and we face all the rejection, we need to remain not loving. Not only that Jesus Christ remained holy, even though uh, they insulted him, they assaulted him, even though they opposed him, and even though they disobeyed him, they respected him, yet that did not make him to lose his character. He was still holy and was good. And it was merciful. You know, when you are being with unkind people, with difficult people, with rough people, ruffians, and then they say things you, you never imagined anybody could say to the Lord and to the Messiah and to the Christ who came to save them. And yet, you know, if you didn't understand that you need to keep your character and you need to keep your compassion, you need to keep that willingness that you have so you'll be qualified and remain stable in reaching out to them, you lose the character of loving and the character of holiness and the character of goodness and the character of mercy. But through it all, Jesus remained compassionate. Jesus remained sinless. He remained spotless. He was unchanging. He was constant in seeking to save the lost in the world. Look at what he said in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading here from verse 10. He stated his purpose, he stated his desire, he stated his mission, and he stated his goal, what he came to do. And he said, their opposition will not stop me, and their rejection will not stop me, and their hatred will not stop me, and their animosity will not stop me. And all the things they say, and all the things they do, and their rejection will not stop me. Look at his goal, and look at your goal. Look at his mission and look at your mission. Look at his calling and look at your calling. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. They didn't understand, but he understood. They rejected, but he stayed on that role. He stayed on that mission. And the more he resisted, the more he persisted. And he said, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And when they showed hatred, like we read in John chapter 15, look at the attitude he had. Look at the character he maintained. Look at the, uh, the disposition that he maintained in First Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even here unto what ye call is saying the calling we have is like the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. He's saying the commission we have is the same commission that Jesus Christ 
Christ had is saying the ministry we have and the duty we have, the responsibility we have is the same duty and the same mission and the same responsibility that Jesus had for even here unto what ye call because Christ also suffered for us. Look at this. Leaving us, tell me. Leaving us, tell me out aloud. An example, a pattern, a model that we should follow his steps. Look at this now. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled. Look at that. Christ was reviled. Christ was insulted. Christ was abused. Christ was rejected. Christ was uh, disobeyed. And Christ was pushed away. They rejected him and they reviled him. Christ was belittled. Christ was humiliated. But look at what he did. He reviled not again. He kept that holiness. He kept that love. He kept that good nature. He kept that compassion. He kept that sinless attitude. He kept the spotlessness. He was unchanging. He was constant. It says, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. We're reading from verse 15. Looking at the character of Christ, looking at the disposition of Christ, looking at the nature of Christ, looking at the response of Christ when they opposed him and when they insulted him and when they reviled him, when he was tempted. We are looking at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points, how many points? Anywhere you think you are tempted, anywhere you think you are challenged, anywhere you think, you know, this pressure is coming upon me and this a kind of problem is coming to me. How can I bear this? Christ was tempted in all points, tempted like us we are, yet without sin. I pray that will be true of you. Now, whatever the temptation, we can say at the end of the day, yet without sin. Whatever the pressure and whatever the conflict and what, however strong your enemy and opposers and persecutors may be, we can say about you at the end of the day, yet without sin. Give me a good amen. amen. Look at chapter 7, chapter 7 of Hebrews. I'm reading from verse 26. For such an high priest became us, look at this, who is holy he was holy, he was holy, he remained holy. Unholy people were around, unholy things were said around him, unholy things were said about him, and they opposed him, they tempted him, they tried him, and it, they almost you know, provoked him, but he's holy. And then it says, harmless. They were harmful. He wouldn't harm them. He wouldn't plan anything that will injure anyone. He was harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. I pray that that will be true of you. And that will be true of me. And that will be true of us as uh, church together in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, sometimes as you look at people who are born again, they are born again and they love people, they love the believers, they love the unbelievers, and they are outgoing, uh, and they want to tell this and tell that and tell that. You must be born again. Jesus is wonderful. He is my Savior. He died for everyone. He wants to save you. But when people push them away, when they reject them, and when they insult them, when they throw things at them, when they slander them, then the love they had, the compassion they had, the mercy they have, everything begins to go down. And then you see them, they're slowing down. They're not like they used to be now, but you know, Jesus, he loved and kept on loving. Loved and kept on loving. I pray that that nature of Christ will be imparted to you tonight in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 13, verse 1. John chapter 13, verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover When Jesus knew that his hour was come What kind of hour is that? The hour of suffering The hour of betrayal The hour of crucifixion The hour when the persecution will come to a climax The hour when all the suffering will come to a climax When he knew that his hour was come That he should depart out of this world Unto the Father And look at this, look at this Are you there? I said, are you in verse 1, chapter 13? 
Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Having loved his own, which were in the world. Tell me the rest if you are there. He loved them unto the end. You see, that's constancy in love. That's constancy in compassion. That's constancy in mercy. He didn't go back because, you know, the people are bad. The people are terrible. You know, they bite the fingers that feed them. And because of the evil of the people, because of the nature of the people, if you try to help them, they will hurt you. If you try to lift them up, they'll bring you down. If you try to bring them out of their sin and bring them to the Savior, they'll pull you into the mud. And therefore, I'm tired. I don't think I want to do it again. But you know, Jesus, he kept on loving, he kept on loving, and kept on loving. You remember on the cross of Calvary, there were two thieves there, one on this side and the other on that other side. And here is Jesus. He was already crucified. He was suffering the pain. He was suffering the agony of all the lashes at his back. He was suffering the agony of the crown of thorns upon his head. And then one of those thieves that said if you are Jesus Christ if you are the Lord if you are Savior save us now and get us away from this cross the other one said how are you talking like that we are suffering for a sin but this man has done nothing wrong and then he said Lord remember me when you come to your kingdom Christ could have said remember you all those people are, he are healed. You know what they said? Crucify him. All those people are helped. You know what they said? They said the way with him. All those people that I brought out of their degradation and I brought them to the plane of prosperity. You know what they said? They said they preferred Barabbas and so help you. But Jesus did not. He loved people to the very end. You will keep on loving people. Whatever people do, whatever people say, however they react and push you away and they react to your love, you'll keep on in that love to the very end in Jesus' name. And Jesus looked at him and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And I'm so happy if that man got to paradise, I'm looking at you, you will get there too. You know, that man had done so much evil that they, they got rid of him and just threw him away on the cross. And then Jesus took him to heaven. And when people have rejected you and you come to that final point, you don't even, you're not even get to that point. Jesus will pick you up. He'll take you to heaven. That heaven you'll get there in Jesus' name. It shows us what our nature ought to be, what our character ought to be, how we ought to resemble the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Number one, because we are called. Number two, because we are cleansed. Number three, because we are converted. Number four, because we are consecrated. Because we are called and because we are cleansed and because we are converted and because we are consecrated we must be like Christ our Savior he even does more than that for us he's not just our Savior he is also our sanctifier and we must be like him I will be like him I said I will be like him Whatever other people do, whatever other people say, even though other people may say they are tired, I will not be tired. I must be a reproduction of the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means the world will hate you and the world will slander you and the world will persecute you. But you'll keep on loving like Jesus Christ did in Jesus' name. First John, first John chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 6. First John chapter 2, verse 6. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. You abide in Christ, he has called you. You abide in Christ, he has cleansed you. You abide in Christ, he has converted you. You abide in Christ, you are consecrated to Christ. You must walk even as Christ walked. We're coming back to that first Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 21. It says, For even hereunto were ye called. Even hereunto were ye called. This is your calling. What's your calling? Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Can you make that personal? Leaving me an example. Can you say that again? Leaving me an example that I should follow his steps. You know, say that God bless you. 
uh, the next time when somebody tries to get on your nerves remember i'm to follow the steps of jesus christ remember when somebody tries to you know step on your toes next deliberately and i say okay it's a christian now and they say christians don't get angry and christians they keep on loving people and no matter what we do to them they'll keep on loving us and they want to put you on trial and deliberately they turn their eyes the other way and step on your toes i pray that love will come out of you anger is gone bad temper is gone fighting is gone because christ has left us an example that the opposition the persecution and all the evil things they did, did against him could not catch him and were told that he threatened not verse 22 who did not sin you will not sin neither was God found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not you'll not threaten anybody I said you'll not threaten anybody you know there are people they forget that Christ is our example any little thing that happens or even a big thing that happens they threaten their fellow brother they threaten their fellow sister or they threaten their wives they threaten their husbands or they threaten their neighbors and say you know if that happens I will show you the red part of my eyes thank God my eyes don't have any red part anymore I said my eyes don't have any red part anymore if you do that again, I will show you Pepe. I don't have Pepe again to show anybody. Do you have Pepe to show somebody? You, you are the salt of the earth. Where is your Pepe? There's no Pepe in your life anymore in Jesus' name. I will Pepe you. Uh -uh, that language has gone. You will not Pepe anybody. Did I hear an amen? We're looking at we're looking at romans look at what the lord wants to be wants you to be what he wants uh, you to become in romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 29 romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 29 it says for whom he did for no also he did press predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that's the goal that's the goal to be conformed to the image of his son uh, that she might be the firstborn uh, among many brethren we're coming back to john uh, chapter 15 tonight we're looking at the faithfulness of christ's witnesses in a hateful world it's a hateful world a world that is pregnant with hatred a world that is full of hostility a world that is full of evil and yet in that hateful world where the witnesses of christ and he says we're going to be his witnesses because the holy ghost has come the comforter has come and the comforter testifies about him and that comforter lives inside us and now we're his witnesses the faithfulness of christ's witnesses in a hateful world three points we're going to look at number one the root and the reasons for the world's hatred the root and the reasons for the world's hatred point number two the result and the recompense for their willful hostility the result and the recompense for their willful hostility point number three the response and responsibility of his witnessing harvesters the response and the responsibility of his witnessing harvesters we're coming to number one number one the root and the reasons for the world's hatred as you look at chapter 15 of john john chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 18 it says in verse 18 if the world hates you ye you know that it hated me before it hated you if ye were of the world the world would love his own if ye were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore that's the reason that's the root of the hatred therefore the world hated you he says now in verse 20 remember the word that i said unto you the servant is not greater than his lord if he if he if they have persecuted me they will also persecute you he says if you live like me 
and they see and they see me in you if you act like me and they see my character in you they persecuted me they're going to persecute you and then he said if they have kept my sin they will keep yours also but all these will they do unto you they show hatred animosity and they show enmity and they show hostility and they show a kind of rejection against you he it says it's for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me he said that's the root that's the reason look at john chapter 3 john chapter 3 the reasons why the people of the world hated christ and why the people of the world hate christians today and they hate the people who are following after christ we're reading from john chapter 3 verse 19 it says this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light men love darkness rather than light men love their darkness they love their tradition they love their, their they love their iniquity they love their defilement they love the fleshly acts and they love all those defiling defiling things and they love their idolatry it says because they love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil look at verse 20 for everyone that doeth evil he tests the light christ is the light of the world and you know why they hated him because they did it evil because they were in darkness neither come to the light lest his deed should be reproved welcome to chapter 7 of john john chapter 7 verse 7 in john chapter 7 verse 7 the world cannot hit you he was telling uh, you know these unconverted people who are members of his natural family he said the world cannot hit you he was telling them because you know these people they wanted to go to the feast religious people but not righteous they were carnal people they were not converted they have not believed on the lord jesus christ they were still like the people of the world and because they were like people of the world jesus said the world cannot hit you if you are lying like them they won't hit you if you lie on their behalf to cover them up they won't hit you if you give them bribes they won't hit you if you take bribes from them they won't hit you if you help them to contact uh, their prostitute and to you know link uh, the prostitute to them they won't hit you they say you're a good boy and uh, you're a good girl and if you're doing evil the evil they want you to do to assist them they won't hit you because you're of the world but thank god you are born again i know i'm born again i said i know i'm born again ah, i cannot hear your voice now and so as you are born again you'll not be of the world in jesus name but you know he was talking to these people the world cannot hit you but but me it hated because look at this this is the reason and this is the root because i testify of it that the works thereof are evil we're looking at chapter 17 john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 14 the reason why believers are hated the reason why christians are hated the reason why we were really converted and we're living a converted life the reason they manifest the animosity and the hatred and the enmity and the hostility against us here is the reason why the root of their hatred the reason for their hatred it says in john chapter 17 verse 14 i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i pray that will be true of you that whatever christ is in the world that you will be whatever christ will not do you will not do wherever christ will not go you will not go and because you are not of the world even as christ is not of the world the world will take note of that and they might speak against you they might look down on you they might belittle you they might humiliate you that's their hatred but you will stand i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil they are not of the world tell me they are not of the world say what follows 
even us, even us, even us. What Christ will not drink, he'll not drink. And what Christ will not eat, he'll not eat. And the shrine Jesus will not go, you'll not go there. And the tradition Jesus will not practice, you will not practice. All the evil things the people of the world are doing, and they want you to fall, and they want you to follow after them, so that uh, you will, they will not persecute you, you will not do those things in Jesus' name. Because now you represent Christ and you are shining forth of the light of Christ. And it says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. But 17, sanctify them. You will be sanctified. You are sanctified already. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And now look at this. As thou hast sent me where? into the world we're not part of them but we're going to evangelize them we're not acting like them but we're going to invite them out of their sin to the savior and we're going to seek the lost to win the lost in jesus name as thou hast sent me into the world even so have i also sent them into the world with the same thing and the same purpose you know you know what you're looking at in number one we're looking at the root and the reasons for the world's hatred look at this in second chronicles chapters chapter 18 second chronicles i'm reading from chapter 18 and we're looking at verse 7 second chronicles chapter 18 we're reading here from verse 7 second chronicles What's the chapter? What's your verse there? Okay, very quickly, very quickly. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Look at this, look at this. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But, but, I hate him. Why? For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. It doesn't modify the word of God. If God says, I'm going to punish sinners, it just tells me like that directly. If God says, God is angry with the sinner every day, he doesn't modify that. He just said that to me. If he said, if you know, God has said that those who remain in sin, they die in sin, that they're going to perish, it just comes and it tells me directly. It doesn't tell me the truth and it doesn't modify the word of God because of that. I hate him. That's the root of their hatred. That's the reason for their hatred. Let me show you an example here in First Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 17. I hate him. I hate him. I pray that you'll not be like Ahab. I will not be like Ahab. You know those, uh, those Pharisees, they were like Ahab. Jesus came and told them the truth. They hated him because he told them the truth. They persecuted him because he told them the truth. They were annoyed. They were, they were unhappy. They were provoked because he told them the truth. Look at 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise. Go down to meet Ahab the king, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Nabal, whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord. Who is talking here? Thus says the Lord. I said, Who is talking here? This is the word of the Lord. Now look up here. What could Elijah do? What could Elijah do? God said, Elijah, God mentioned his name, and God called him, and God said, I'm sending you somewhere, I'm sending you to uh, Ahab, and as you get to Ahab, God says the Lord. Look up here, it's like me tonight, for example, here we are. We're looking at John chapter 15, and we're looking at verses 17 all through to verse 27. What could I say? The word of God is there, and when I come, all I can do is read the Bible. All I can do is say, look at what this Bible says, look at what Jesus said, and then I repeat what Jesus said. If anybody then uh, will say, uh, you know, he's talking against me. I'm not talking against you. It's the word of God that is talking against you. Instead of throwing something at 
at me, you should throw something at yourself and say, I'm the guilty man, I'm the wretched man, I'm the sinner. And then I tell you that Jesus Christ is Savior. No matter what you've done, is inviting you now that you must repent. If you repent, you will go to heaven. What else could I say? And then I say, if you don't repent, and I point at you, you will go to hell. Ah, you see, I'm going to hell. I didn't say that. It's the Bible that said so. What said so? I said, who said so? It's the almighty God that says so. And I just repeat the word of God. If anybody then will turn around and say, I hate him. No, you don't hate me. It's the word you hate. And actually you hate yourself because instead of preparing to go to heaven, you are fighting against your own soul. Look at Ahab here. I'm reading now from verse 19. And then, shall, uh, then sh thou shalt say unto him, Thou says the Lord, I shall kill and also take him possession, and thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord. Somebody help me say, Thus says the Lord. In the place where the dogs lick uh, the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said unto Elijah, Ahab said unto Elijah, Read it out yourself. As thou found me, oh my enemy, uh -huh. I know you've been trailing me. I know you've been following me around. I know you've seen what I've done. And you are my enemy. I hate you. I want to tell you to your face. Have you found me, oh my enemy? Ahab, what's the matter? It's not your enemy. It's God who sent him. He wants you to repent. That's your friend, Elijah. And that's, your, uh, that, that's somebody that loves your soul. He wants you to be saved. You'll be saved tonight if you're not already saved. He'll forgive your sin. He'll take away your sin. And all those evil things you have been doing, that the word of God is against, and then the word of God comes to you, and it says, Thou art the man, you will repent tonight in Jesus' name. And so he said, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to walk evil in the sight of the Lord. I pray you will not be like Ahab. But, but you know why? Why he hated Elijah? Because Elijah will tell the truth. And because Elijah will say, the way of the sinner is hard. And the way of the sinner is going to lead to judgment. We're coming to Amos. Amos. Uh, I, I hope you'll find Amos very quickly. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5 uh, is uh, near the end of the Old Testament. I'm there already. I don't know whether you found Amos. Amos chapter 5. Uh, I'm reading from verse 10. Are you there? Yeah. Wonderful. Look at this. Amos chapter 5 verse 10. They hate him that rebukes in the gate. They hate him that makes correction of their lives correction of their character and calls them to repent they hate him those who are the people who are calling them to repentance who are calling them to righteousness who are calling them to conversion who are calling them to find the way of the lord they hate him that rebukes in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly you will not be like that it tells us those who don't have the love for the truth, that's the hatred they manifest, that's the animosity they manifest because they are not born again. If you find yourself hating the truth, if you find yourself hating the preacher, if you find yourself hating sound doctrine, the reason is that you do not have conversion and you do not have the life of Christ in you. And I pray that tonight you'll come to that conversion. And you come to that life of Christ tonight in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 10. It says, and with all deceivableness of righteousness in, in them that perish because they receive not the love for the truth. 
Love of repentance? No, they don't have that. And love to make restitution? No, I don't like that. And love to be righteous, redeemed of the Lord? No, they don't like that. And love of following peace and, and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord? They don't love that. And it, and it says, and because they receive not the love of the truth, it says that they might be saved. And for this cause, for this reason, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness we're coming to romans chapter one romans chapter one i'm reading from verse 28 romans chapter one the root and the reasons for the world's hatred why they hate those who speak the truth and why they hated Christ, and why they hated the disciples, and why they hate you today if you are born again. Look at these haters of God, look at their character. It says in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, the God of truth, and the God of light, they did not like the light, of the knowledge of the revelation they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind i pray you'll not have a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with what all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit malignity whisperers backbiters tell me what follows haters of god haters of god if you're filled with unrighteousness you'll hate god because god is judge and god is going to bring a fiery judgment on the final day and then it goes on to say they are haters of god despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful look at this verse 32 who know ye not tell me the judgment of God. God is judge and God is going to judge every unrighteousness on the final day. It says knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. We're coming to First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3 and I'm reading here from verse 12. First John chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 12 it tells us in first john chapter 3 verse 12 not as cain who was of that wicked one i pray you'll not be of that wicked one you see cain hated abel just like the world hates uh, the people who love the lord who are acceptable to the lord because he was of that wicked one and then it says he slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous marvel not my brethren if the world hates you ye know that we are passed from death unto life because we love the brethren i love the brethren i said i love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abides in death you know there are people and he gave these uh, soaring testimonies i'm born again i'm converted i'm a christian i'm a follower of jesus i'm deeper deeper alive i'm holier i'm this i'm sanctified and they hate the brethren and they hate the doctrine and they hate the truth and they hate the preacher and he hates christ and he hates the way of the lord all that testimony is a lie it's not true it's counterfeit because it says in verse uh, in verse 13 marvel not my brethren uh, if the world hates you ye know that you are passed from death unto life because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him the hatred of the world is the evidence of the prevailing nature of satan in sinners satan hates god satan hates christ 
Satan hates the plan of redemption. Satan hates the truth. Satan hates the gospel penetration. Gospel penetration, when the gospel penetrates this way and that way, Satan hates that. Satan hates the preachers that snatch souls from his slavery. Satan hates steadfastness and righteousness. And if you hate God, hate Christ, hate the truth, hate God's word presentation and gospel penetration, if you hate the preachers that evangelize and that snatch souls out of the hands of Satan, if you hate the steadfastness and righteousness and be earnestly contending for the faith, once delivered and says, that's exactly what Satan does. It means that you are under the control of Satan. You have the might of the God of this world. You have the nature of the God of this world. And you have the will of the God of this world. Actually, every sinner under the influence of Satan, under the, inf the control of Satan, under the power of the prince of this world, they hate God and his revelation. They hate Christ and his redemption. And they hate conversion and those who are converted and true righteousness. But you will not be part of them. I will not be part of them. I love the truth. I said I love the truth. I love redemption. I love righteousness. I love Christ. And I love to go to heaven. You'll be there. I said you'll be there. Look at John, we're coming to point number two now. The result and recompense, the result and recompense for the willful hostility. The willful hostility. This deliberate hostility against the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at John chapter 15. I'm reading to you from verse 22. John chapter 15 verse 22. Here it says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had seen. But now they have, they have no cloak, no excuse for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did. Jesus Christ came, he opened the eyes of the blind. He made the lame to rise up to walk. He cleansed the lepers, he raised the dead, he saved the sinners, and he did many things. He multiplied bread for thousands of people. And Jesus said, I've done things that no other man had done. No other person can be, can claim to be the Messiah. I am the Messiah. I show them the credentials and I show them the proof. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had seen. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this come it to pass that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law tell me read it out very well they hated me without a cause without any reason at all they have no reason to hate me and yet they hated me and if you were to make them sit down Pharisees sit down here Sadducees sit down here Herodians sit down here and all you Israelites sit down here tell us exactly what Christ has done bad evil that you have this hatred hostility against him no they couldn't see anything because he did everything good that no other person had ever done. The hostility was willful. It was deliberate. It was determined. And they shouldn't have done that. In fact, Jesus said, it's written in their law. It's written, look at where it's written. We're looking at Psalm 109, Psalm 109. And I'm reading here from verse 2. He said, they hated me without a cause. In Psalm 109, verse 2, for the mouths of the wicked and the mouths of the deceitful are opened against me. They have opened uh, the, uh, they have spoken against me with lying tongue. Look at verse 3. They compass me about also with words of hatred, words of hatred, and they fought against me. Tell me what follows. 
without a cause they cannot give the reason why they do this for my love they are my adversaries and i give myself unto prayer in verse 5 it says and they have rewarded me evil for good and hated me for my love that's what they did against christ look at proverbs chapter 1 proverbs chapter 1 but you see the result of that you see the recompense for them you see it's going to come on them because of this hatred that has no root that has no reason at all proverbs chapter uh, 20 chapter 1 verse 28 it says in proverbs 1 28 then shall they call upon me but i will not answer god will not answer their prayers look at this they shall seek me early but they shall not find me why for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord they hated knowledge they hated the truth they hated the word of righteousness because of that when they call i will not answer it says in verse 30 they would none of my counsel they despised all my reproof then it says in verse 31 therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them i pray that will not be you look at chapter 8 proverbs chapter 8 Verse 36, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongs his own soul. Anyone sin against Christ wrongs his own soul. Anyone that pushes away Christ wrongs his own soul. Anyone that rejects Christ the Savior means that he doesn't want to be saved. And then it says, All that hate me love death. All that hate me love death death look at the meaning of that in john chapter 5 verse 40 john chapter 5 i mean in verse 40 it says and ye will not come to me that ye might have life the reason why they were not saved they hated christ they hated the messiah they hated the salvation they hated the savior and he said because of that hatred because of the willful hostility you will not come unto me that you will be saved matthew chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 15 matthew chapter 13 we're reading from verse 15 it says for these people's heart is worse gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed they hated the truth and when the truth was brought near to them they closed their eyes look at this look at this look at this verse and look at this chapter it talks about christ and talks about the redeemer and it talks about repentance and it talks about the way to get to heaven uh -uh, i don't want to read that because i don't want to repent i don't want to see that they close their eyes look at this without holiness no man shall see the lord let me show you where it is in the bible oh, i don't want to see that they closed their eyes and look at this i go to prepare a place for you and when i go and prepare a place for you i will come again can i show where it is in the bible i don't want to see that because of the hatred they have for holiness and righteousness they don't want to see i pray you will not be like that it says for this people such is what's gross and their eyes and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and i should heal them look at uh, osea chapter 9 osea old testament after daniel osea chapter 9 we're reading from verse 7 in Osea chapter 9, reading from verse 7, it says, The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. Can you, can you tell there are people who are, they say they are prophets? 
and when they hear something of the word of God and say, Look at this, uh, the prophet will say, Where's that coming from? Well, I went to deeper life and they taught me this and I learned this and I want to reveal uh, deeper. I hate that even that word deeper life. They are proud, they are pompous. Somebody is deeper. That means we're shallow. What do they mean by that? I hate them. Go tell their leader. I hate those people. It says the prophets are mad. They're furious. They're angry. And it says over here, they have great hatred. Look at verse 8. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. In the past, that's past tense, was with my God. But the, but the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways. And hatred is where? hatred in the house of God, of his God. You see, there are people, uh, they, they just uh, they, they have hatred all along. In their heart, hatred, willful hostility against the truth of the word of God. And you know what they are saying? Look at it in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 14. Luke chapter 19. Verse 14, quickly, quickly. Luke chapter 14, 19, verse 14. But his brethren hated him. His citizens hated him and sent a messenger after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. He will not control us, he will not direct us, he will not influence us. We're not going to have this man reigning over us because of the hatred. But is Christ? Forget about that. Is Messiah? Forget about that. He's not going to reign over us because of their hostility. Did Jesus hate them back? Are you going to hate them back? Look at verse 41. Verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. He beheld the city and wept over it. No, he did not manifest hatred. They hated him. He had compassion. He had mercy. He had pity. He had sympathy. And he said, if they had known, let me read it to you, verse 42, saying, if thou art known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things would belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from, your, uh, from thine eyes. For the day it shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round about and keep thee on every side and it says and shall lay thee even to the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another because 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 thou knewest not the time of thy visitation as we look at these people hostility and hatred kept them away from christ kept them away from salvation kept them away from eternal life kept them away from heaven hatred and hostility kept them away from peace away from forgiveness kept them away from grace away from mercy kept them away from heaven hatred and hostility kept them away from receiving the gift of righteousness kept them away from holiness kept them away from heaven hatred and hostility kept them away in unbelief and kept them in bitterness and sent them all to hell hatred and hostility made them reject the light they died in darkness they were sent to hell they should not have gone to hell the one to take them to heaven was right before them but no they closed their eyes they closed their minds hatred and hostility made them to reject every offer of salvation of redemption and they perished many of them were religious they perished they were zealous they perished they were active but they had hatred they perished they were outgoing in religion but they perished they were neighborly 
That means, you know, they were, were you sick of neighbors, you know, I opened the door for you, opened the door for me, they could do that. And they could wash the feet of, you know, fellow Pharisees when they came to their houses. They could give dinner, they could serve dinner, they could serve that, but they had hatred in their heart. And because of that hatred, although they were, they were sociable, although they were worldly wise, yet hatred and hostility deprived them of heaven and sent them to an eternal hell. You know what they were doing? They were waiting for another Messiah. The real Messiah, hatred and hostility made them to reject. We don't want that one. Jesus of Nazareth, no, we don't want that one. The one that said, is healing the sick and raising the dead. We don't want that one. We want another one. They waited in vain. They waited for the Messiah that never came. Because the one, the true Messiah, hatred and hostility made them to reject and they perished. I will not perish. What, what else are you going to hear? The word of salvation is there. What else are you waiting for? And the one that will lead you into that holiness without which no man shall say the Lord is ready here. What else are you waiting for? And the truth of the word of God is made clear, made plain. And we analyze everything. You can see the black and white. You see it yourself that this is the day of salvation. If you're going to be saved, here is the chance. But prejudice in your heart, hatred in your heart, and willful disobedience in your heart, and hostility will make some people to reject. Thank God you will not reject. I said you will not reject. You receive the truth and, host, and, and this hostility will not hinder you in Jesus name. Give a good good amen. amen. Romans, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed each unto them. Look at this, look at this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead tell me what follows read that in using one two three go so that they are without excuse all those people that had hatred and hostility in their heart and rejected they rejected jesus didn't have any excuse chapter 2 verse 1 chapter 2 verse 1 therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judges for therein wherein thou judgest another and thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges doeth the same things. If you condemn those uh, Pharisees and those uh, Jewish people because hatred and hostility hindered them, if you have the same hostility and the same hatred in your heart and the same willfulness in your heart, there's no excuse because that's what those other people did and that's what you're doing. I pray today you will turn around. I turn around. I said I turn around say it well i turn around and jesus is your savior the lord is your savior and the truth will do you good in jesus name hell you will not go to hell heaven you will get there all the hatred all the animosity all the bitterness against deeper life against this against that is taken away from your heart in jesus name i love the truth I said, I love the truth. And the truth will be a witness in your heart in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. The response and responsibility of his witnessing harvesters. The response and the responsibility of his harvesting of his witnessing harvesters. We're looking at John chapter 15 verse 26. It says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall be a witness. And ye also shall be a witness. And ye also shall be a witness. Any witness there? 
any soul winner there any preacher there you yeah, preacher in jesus name and you also shall be a witness because ye have been with me from the beginning we're to be witnesses in these last days as we see the world coming to an end we're going to be a witness of the lord it tells us in matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 11 it says in verse 11 and many many false prophets shall arise and deceive many you see the false prophets are deceiving many people reach out to those people before they are taken away it says but and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end who is that he that shall endure unto the end i said who is that you will not faint by the way you will not fall by the way you will endure to the end in jesus name and no temptation that is above you will come to you no trial above you will come to you and no pressure above you will come to you you will endure to the end i will endure i said i will endure but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved look at this look at this and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for what for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come for a witness for a witness he wants you to preach the word for a witness we're looking at luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 verse 47 it says and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem and verse 48 tell me ye are witnesses of these things you'll be a witness look at john look at acts chapter one acts chapter one i'm reading from verse eight acts chapter one i will read him from verse eight it wants you to be a witness a powerful witness an effective witness it wants to be a constant witness a witness in your community a witness to all the people that come across your way acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says but he shall receive power amen, amen. after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be what amen. say it aloud ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth the question is who are these supposed to be the witnesses because he said you tarry in jerusalem and then you receive the power of the holy ghost and you'll be witnesses unto me let's look at them verse 14 and these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication you see he said you receive power and then they continue these 120 you will continue you will not slack back you will not draw back you will not separate yourself and the amen is gone and then it says with the women you know there, there are some people that have i thank god the sisters who are here you know that you are part of the witnesses sisters are you there yeah. i'm looking for them god bless you yeah. and the work will prosper your hand in jesus name you know these women they didn't tell you okay those are the men this one is men's area men's work is for women too and the youths are the youths here tonight what are they wonderful youth help me shout the word wonderful yeah. wonders will never end in your life yeah. give a good youthful amen yeah. so the women are there the youths are there everybody the children they're over there and the children are part of this and mary the mother of jesus even our mothers and the lord they are also included and then his brethren we're all witnesses you are going to be a witness in jesus name an effective witness a mighty witness a powerful witness while the world hated them they 
witness is harvested their souls all true believers all true disciples of christ are his witnesses in christ uh, in christ's disciples we see the evidence of a genuine salvation the evidence of true sanctification because we have the might of christ what christ was doing that's what they were doing that's why they were witnesses not only that number two they had the nature of christ the nature of christ the same nature that loved sinners the same nature that went after sinners wanting to reach after them they are that number three they are the love of christ an undying love an unchanging love that whatever insult and whatever persecution whatever misunderstanding they kept on loving and then it tells us in the world not only that number four they are the spirit of christ no spirit of anger no spirit of jealousy no spirit of fighting no spirit of putting anybody down the spirit of christ number five they are the zeal of christ the zeal of christ the zeal of thine house has consumed me number six they are the compassion of christ number seven they are the single-mindedness of christ you see the response of these people although they were persecuted although they were rejected they kept on preaching the word let's look at acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts of the apostles chapter 8 and i'm reading here from verse 4 acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 4 therefore they that was scattered abroad went everywhere what were they doing preaching the word and as we're going to end the bible study now i was scattered to our communities everywhere we go we'll be preaching the word i have preachers in the house here today we're going to preach the word in jesus name in conclusion can i just show you what that means when it says the daughter scattered abroad they went about preaching the word why were they scattered they were scattered because of the hatred of the world because they persecuted them they were scattered because of the rejection of the people in jerusalem and what do we learn of them they responded to the world's hatred with love they responded to the world's hatred with love the hatred was coming it was like fire it was driving everybody away but they responded with love number two they responded to persecution with preaching persecute them they preach more persecute them more they preach more persecute them more they preach more because they responded to persecution with preaching number three they responded to cruelty with courage they drove them out of their houses those persecutors were cruel and even they, they manifested cruelty to them they were courageous they were unconquerable they were unstoppable you'll be unconquerable in jesus name they responded to hatred with love they responded to persecution with preaching they responded to cruelty with courage they responded to hostility with harmlessness harmlessness they won't harm anybody they just you know, you drop them from here they won't throw anything at you they won't burn your house and they won't uh, destroy you they won't even they will be praying for you that although you have not seen the light now you will see the light you will see be born again they were totally harmless they responded to hostility with harmlessness number five they responded to anger with tenderness they responded to anger with tenderness not like you know you throw stone at me i throw stone back to you you beat me with a rod i'm going to take another rod and smash you never never all these uh, people were reading about and they were witnesses of to the lord jesus christ they responded to anger with tenderness number six they responded to rejection with repetition repetition that he is a continual repeated preaching when they went there and they rejected they went back again repetition and they preached that word of god again and they responded to the world's objection with obedience to the great commission obedience to the great commission and as our response as you go away as you go out out of the bible study and they are negative you'll be positive and they are rejecting you repeat the message to them and they are angry you are going to show them love in jesus name look at chapter 26 acts of the apostles chapter 26 and i'm reading here from verse 19 acts chapter 26 verse 19 whereupon o king agrippa i 
was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Can we read that together before we pray? Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I, 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 I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I pray you'll keep on preaching. I'll keep on preaching. What are you? I'll keep on preaching. Rise up and tell the Lord you'll continue. The hatred of the world will not stop you. The animosity of the world will not stop you. And all the hostility of the world will not stop you. Keep on doing what the Lord has called you to do and great will be your reward in Jesus' name.